What do you reckon it was about you? Why did she choose you? That's a, the million dollar question. If only Gobi could answer that question herself, I think that would be quality. It's certainly not my looks, so <laughs> I don't know why. Some people have said, maybe I smell so much. It, it could be that she likes my smell. She knows exactly where he is, and she just needs to be by his side all the time. Um, and there's just a, a special bond. There's definitely a, a magic bond between them. They just click. There has to be something, because it's not a normal man and dog relationship scenario. It, it's, it's clearly more than that. It feels like we have known each other forever. Gobi, the scruffy desert dog, and Dion, the lanky Aussie ultramarathon runner, have a remarkable and unshakable bond. The race was on to find her. How they found and lost and then found each other again is one of the most incredible stories of fate and friendship. It, it's a love story. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a good old-fashioned love story. <laughs> With a happy ending. Yeah, thank goodness. <sighs> Dion and his wife, Lucia, are both from Queensland. But 10 years ago, they moved to Edinburgh, Scotland, when Dion got a job as an executive at a whiskey company. Outside of work, they kept fit by running. Dion took it to the next level, taking up the extreme sport of ultra running, covering hundreds, sometimes thousands of kilometers. You introduced him to running, didn't you? I did. Silly move, because it was something I was actually good at until he took it on, and now he's better than me, so. <laughs> June last year, the Gobi Desert in central China. Dion and a hundred other runners have traveled from all corners of the globe to put their bodies and their minds to the ultimate test by running across one of the most desolate places on earth. Dion knew what he had to do, very steely minded wasn't here to make friends, um, was here to race, and that was it. Nothing was going to get between him and that goal. Nothing. <laughs> but something did. But something certainly did. <laughs> yeah, something with four legs and a bit of fur. <laughs> On the first day of the week-long race, Dion noticed a stray dog in the camp. I just saw this little scruff ball, this ragged dog uh, walking around. I didn't think too much of it. I thought she was with the crew and the organisers. I, I just assumed that this dog might run 50 or 100 metres with me and then peel off as, as we come stampeding through. Um, there's quite a lot of noise and a bit of action and uh, excitement from the start of the race, so I thought she'd probably get scared of that. The gun goes off. And we start running off, and this little dog's you know, still looking at me and running beside me and looking up at me. And, I'm waiting for her still to peel off and 50, 100 metres, 200 metres. She's keeping up with me. She's you. just keeping up with me. She's actually running a little bit ahead and looking over her shoulder at me. The Chihuahua Terrier Cross ran stride for stride with Dion for the rest of the day. Throughout none of this period, you know, have I spoken to her, have I called her, have I fed her, have I watered her? I just, you know, literally didn't think she'd stay with me. You ignored her? <laughs> yeah. I get to the finish line and I hear this little rustle behind me and uh, it's Gobi. Uh, she, she's, she's, uh, she's done the race as well and I look down at her and I was like, wow. <laughs> That's tough enough for me to do it, let alone a little dog. So starting to think, God, I've got to give her some of my food. That's a big decision. It is a big decision, absolutely, because it also affects my recovery. That takes away from everything that I've set out and pre-planned for in terms of eating, recovery and... That's really when the first bond was made, is, is in that tent, from when I started sharing my food. I mean, during a multi-stage, he doesn't even give me food. Govey definitely, definitely had a big impact on him. Lucia was back in Edinburgh, following the race on social media. Photos of Dion and his furry running mate, who they'd nicknamed Gobi, had gone viral and were being shared across China and around the world. And it was from day two that I started seeing the photos consistently with Dion. So that's when I started to think, 
what's going on here? Because, you know, Dion runs quick as well, and this dog only has little legs like this, and how's she keeping up with him? I can't keep up with him. But every day of the race, Gobi turned up at the start line, ready to run with Dion again. What did you think was happening? Well, I could see what was happening. There was certainly a bond forming, a friendship forming. Halfway into the race, Dion and Gobi were in fourth place. Ahead, the toughest stage of all. There was wide river crossings, which would be up to my waist in height, rushing water, where Gobi wouldn't have been able to cross that on her own. Why'd you go back and pick up that dog? If I didn't pick her up, she wasn't crossing the water. She was no longer with me. And I could tell by the way she was also running up and down and barking and yelping and, and, and squealing. But this was a, a life-changing moment for both of us in some respects. So it wasn't something that I had time to think about. I just felt the bond. So at this point, you're no longer racing alone. No. <laughs> Dion, with Gobi by his side, won that stage of the race and won the hearts of millions of followers across China. Dion was doing interview after interview and people were just, yeah, absolutely enthralled by the story. And I was just amazed at, at how, how much people fell in love with Gobi. I don't know, they seem to feel like Gobi's part of their life as well and how much joy she's bringing people. They finished the race together. Dion won silver, but even better, he had a new best friend. I wasn't aware that everyone was blogging about this little dog. I wasn't aware that the race organisers were talking about you know, Gobi competing and... So you had no idea Gobi was famous? So I had no idea that she was starting to become, yeah, famous <laughs> already. Um, so when I re actually went to Ring Lucia and say, hey, uh, she, she just cuts me off, though. She says, uh, I see you've been running this little dog. Are you, are you bringing her home? You know, what about Gobi? She, she knew the name as well. I was like, yeah, I'd love to. What do you think? And she was like, there's no question. I knew you were going to do it. He's met someone else? He has. He's <laughs> fallen for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> With blonde hair as well, so he's got a thing for blondes, I think. Let's go. Gobi would need to spend months in quarantine before she'd be allowed to return to the UK with Dion. A friend in the city of Urumqi offered to look after her. So you're, you're about to leave. What did, what did you say to her? I basically just said, I'll be back. <laughs> like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, I'll be back. We'll see each other again. But days later, Gobi got restless and ran away from the home where she was being cared for. She was lost, somewhere in a city of three million people and thousands of stray dogs. I knew it was a big city. I knew that that, that was a, a, a busy city and that a little dog there wasn't going to survive. Dion and Gobi the dog had crossed a desert together. The scruffy stray had made such a huge impression on Dion that he was determined to bring her home to Scotland. I remember sort of patting her on the head, just saying, just trust me, I'll get you back to the UK, you know, we'll be together again soon. But Gobi, who was in quarantine at Dion's friend's house in the Chinese industrial city of Urumqi, went missing. There must be hundreds in there. If anyone could help find Gobi, it was American animal welfare activist Chris Barden. Hi, Steve. Chris, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow. They're beautiful. Chris runs this huge dog shelter in Beijing. He's been rescuing strays off the streets in China for the best part of a decade. In this particular location, we have about 230 dogs. 
Uh, most of them were rescued from the dog meat trade. So these dogs here, they would have been eaten? Yes, yes. All the dogs here were, were, going, to be, uh, were going to be dog meat. Uh, they were rescued uh, near Beijing uh, off a dog meat truck. Chris had heard of Gobi from news reports about her epic desert crossing with Dion. Gobi, you know, following this runner and teaming up with him and then becoming unlikely sort of uh, mates, whatever, and, and then, uh, you know, Gobi's going to go overseas to have a, this, you know, wonderful new home in, in the UK, and then suddenly Gobi gets lost. It was amazing. Chris sent photos of Gobi to his unique network of thousands of supporters, asking them to help. Everyone got together and decided we're going to find this dog. And, and it's without exaggeration, there must have been hundreds of people actively looking for, for Gobi. At the same time, Dion arrived back in China, beginning his search at the place Gobi was last seen. What we had to do was make sure that everyone in Yurumchi was aware of it. So we went crazy across social media, the news, TV. We had over 30,000 flyers delivered across the city. Everywhere you went, you knew Gobi was missing, and that was the best that we could do. So the whole city knew now there's a missing dog on the streets and you're looking for it. Yeah. We got so many leads, it just went ballistic. Over 200 leads a day on Gobi sightings across the city. But as each day passed, and as each new lead led to a dead end, Dion became disheartened. You'd broken you down and worn you down. Yeah, I was, I was, I was spent. I really was completely at the lowest I've been ever. Emotionally wrecked. To actually know that I had let her down was something that I would have to regret for the rest of my life. But 10 long days after Gobi went missing, a break in the search. Among the scores of photos sent in by the public, one looked promising. Dion drove across the city to a small apartment. The recognition was immediate. Hey. Gobi's come running across the, the ground and uh, is literally coming, jumping up into my arms. She recognized you straight away. Shrieking and you know, uh, barking and squealing and just filled with excitement to see me. And I hadn't said a word. This mobile phone video was taken minutes after their reunion. Dion was so shocked, he couldn't believe he'd found Gobi. He just said, we found her, and there was just tears. I started crying, everyone around me started crying, and it was just amazing. You know, there's the happy ending everyone was, you know, praying for. So this was a love story, and everyone wanted a happy ending. Yeah, and we got, we got the happy ending, yeah, yeah. But the story was not over. During her days living on the streets of Urumqi, Gobi had taken a battering. She was seriously injured and required surgery to repair a broken bone in her leg. With the best care possible and plenty of rest and love, We've got the tail wag still going. Gobi made a full recovery. There you go. Within weeks, she was back to her old self, as feisty as ever. Tomorrow, Gobi. Perfect, that's cool. That's a good one. And she's cleared to fly back to Scotland with Dion. Welcome to Paris. 6,000 kilometers by air, by sea, and by road. Then, after three solid days of travel, the warmest of homecomings for Dion, Lucia, and Gobi. That was, yeah, that was the best finish line ever, and it's been the longest race ever, and, it, you know, that's how I've sort of put it. It's been a long, long journey, and uh, this has been the best reward, the best race medal, if you like.